we had the chance to talk to um, Jimbo and a couple of your teammates about your leadership. Uh, it praised you a great deal in that area. How do you lead? Well, uh, I try to lead by example, but the whole thing that I, I was brought up uh, in a, a camp when I was there, I said, they say leaders are born, not made. So I don't try to, you know, be too intense with the leadership. So I, I just try to let it happen. And just when things get going and when I start feeling, I just get this feeling inside that something needs to be said. I just, I react. Rashad said he, he felt like you were a natural leader. Uh, if I could, I wanted to ask you to talk about two examples of that. One that a lot of people saw, one that few people saw. The first is what people saw before Clemson when you, you let our cameras get in pregame. We're expected to see a different kind of stern pregame speech where someone is shouting and angry. How were you in that speech and why did you take that direction? Well, most people, when they think about big games, they think about, oh man, let's get serious, get focused. But I just wanted to bring a different approach because the game that we all love and the game we all play, it's about fun. And as long as we like comfortable in our situation, as long as we comfortable, we're going to do our job right. So I want everybody to know, team-wise, like, hey, have fun. Let's chill. Let's get the vibe going. Let's get our swagger together. Let's get everything together. So, I mean, we just went with the flow. A season ago at NC State, when you weren't even playing and things started to go the wrong way for the team in the second half, how did you react then in terms of leadership? Do you remember? What did you do? I got everybody up. I just, I mean, I brought the intensity. I was trying to bring the intensity back. But it looked like we were kind of flat. So I just wanted everybody to just stay in and stay in the game. Like, hey, we got this. Hey, don't let, don't let things fall off. Because that's one thing that we're known for is let, letting things fall off. And I, I didn't want that to happen. Like, we didn't, we didn't need that to happen because we were highly ranked. Everybody, I mean, we had to win the attitude. So I had to keep it. We had to keep it. For a guy that had yet to play in a game, what gave you the belief to address juniors and seniors in such a way in that game, James? One thing that Coach Fisher always tells me about, the game is always bigger than you. And we love this game so much, and we put so much into this game. I just, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't let it happen. I just have one more for you, and it's baseball-wise. I talked to Coach Martin today, and he pointed to the doubleheader against Tech last season. What happened at, toward the end of that first game of that doubleheader, if you can share with us? Oh, man, we were losing 5 nothing. I think, in the second and third inning. And I just, it's just their competitiveness. And I know how good that I've been watching Florida State since I've been going, growing up. And I know this is the first time I've seen us during the season. Just We look like we just were not prepared to play. Like We look like we just was going nonchalantly. So I was just I was like, come on, man, this is not Florida State baseball. we got to pick up the tempo. And we did. We came back and won that game. Davis, how do you feel like the offense uh, played on Saturday? Obviously, you were very good to start. Was the end a little frustrating, even as good as you were at the beginning? Well, we, we, we ended kind of flat, and that was, that was my fault, obviously, because, I mean, I got to keep the intensity going. And, like, the first quarter was so fast, the first quarter was so exciting that me, as a player, I got to, I mean, uh, get to the point just like, guys, don't let – their mistakes make us, let's not play down to their level. Let's play Florida State football and keep things going. James, having grown up in Alabama, you probably don't have some of the ties, but have you gotten a sense from some of your teammates how personal this game could be? Yeah, um, this more of like a, a brotherly game. You know, Miami is well, obviously down south, and, you know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big robbery. But, you know, it's just, it's like we're going to be in the backyard. I mean, we're just going to be playing against each other. And uh, we want to be our brother. And if they want to be the big brother, we want to be the little brother. It's still a, a friendly competition, and, you know, it's going to be a battle. Candace, what have you seen out of Miami? He's looking at their film. What do you see out of Miami's defense? What challenges will they present to you they, have, they, have, they have a lot of great players. And I think when you have a, a great team, the, by being a rivalry, those great, those great players are going to turn into amazing players because they, they have a lot inside just like we have. So it's going to be a battle. We expect it to be a, a, I mean, a good game. I mean, because we're going to every game expecting it to be a good. So even if they have some mediocre players, they're going to turn into outstanding players just because of the pride that's going to be in this game and just because what they have to lose and what we have to lose.
What separates the rivalry, Jameis, from others in sports? This one, FSU against Miami. Well, it's, it's, it's an in-state rivalry. And uh, most people think of uh, our schools, our two schools, you know, being about Miami's obviously a private school, and they think about Miami and Florida State as the girls' schools. But they don't understand that, I mean, we're a football team, and uh, I watched the ESPN 30 for 30 thing. They said how Florida State stole the swag from Miami. So that's going to be a big thing. Always with us trying to bring the swag back. And Miami saying that they got it back. So it's going to be a big thing. This will be your first time playing in a game of this magnitude in this stadium. How much are you looking forward to that? I'm, I mean, I'm looking for it just like the Clemson game because people said the Clemson game, like, this is going to be the first time you're playing in this game. I'm, obviously, this game is more intense and it's a, I mean, it's an in state rivalry. So we just gonna do what we do every week. I mean, we gonna prepare the same. Obviously, we gonna have a little bit more in the inside us being at home, not wanting to lose at home, and us playing against Miami. Be nice, <clears throat> be nice to have that rowdy atmosphere on your side this time. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be real nice. I, I mean, it's not gonna be as loud because they usually quiet down when we on the field, but it's gonna it's gonna be a real good feeling just having. I mean, people eighty five thousand people on your side this time. James, some people are saying that your Florida State secondary might be the best in the country. You go up against them in practice. How good is your guy's secondary? Well, my two best friends are, uh, are cornerbacks, P.J. Williams and Ronald Darby. So we hang out the most. That's what one thing they always make fun of me because when I first got here, I always hung out with the defensive players and not the offensive players. So I, I mess with them all the time, especially Darby. Me and Darby have a little three-finger thing that we do before every game that we always play. We always, I mean, bring in the excitement because Darby is a goofy guy too. Uh, we always compete just because we've we been great friends. They always try to pick me off. I always try to, I mean, we're trying to make each other better. But our defense is, just our defense as a whole with Timmy J, uh, Telvin, everybody, Christian Jones, everybody just playing together. And the way that they've been gelling, as a, I mean, people don't recognize this is their first year in this defense. And the way they're playing right now is outstanding. They, they were already playing well. Now Darby seems like he's healthy again. He's picking off passes. I mean, he kind of takes you guys to even another level. What well, people don't understand about Darby, Darby is still, he still doesn't have the speed that he had last year. And he's developed better to his game. Now he's coming downhill, I mean, knocking people's heads off. Darby is just, he's such an amazing player. That's one time, me, me and Marcus Oliveway was talking about it just last night. We was like, Darby doesn't know how good he really is because he, he hasn't even got everything back from last year. Like, But he's still stepping up to a new game. James, you always talk about staying yourself and being yourself and not getting caught up in all this. How are you still are you still doing that? I mean, you know, your your press conferences are live on Sports Center. You've got Tom Rinaldi asking you questions. Is it hard to stay yourself? No, it's, it's never hard to be yourself, man. I mean, we you always I, I was born like I was born myself. I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not, I'm not expecting, you know, to be nobody else even on down the road. I mean, I just that's how I was born and raised, you know. I mean, we just people people seem to lose track of what they came from. I don't think that I never lose that because I know that. I mean, I had to grind when uh, ever since I was born. So, and I'm I don't plan on losing it. If we're gonna do it, then we do it big. Then <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. I mean, if you're gonna do it, then we do it big. And obviously, that's off a of, that's off a of song, Webby. Uh, so. I mean, I just, I, I brought that into us because if you're going to go on a big stage and it's big, you might as well do it big. You might as well not sit back and hold anything back from it. We see your happiness and your joy in so many settings. When do you, does your leadership, Jameis, take a sharper tone? Uh, probably, I, I really don't get that, I don't get that serious at, at, at any time. The only time I'm, I'm really serious is, is probably when I'm doing bad. Because I need the guys to see that it's, it's not just a joke. I mean, I, I want them to see that, oh, this is, this is serious. Like, if I'm doing bad and when I'm doing bad, I just want them to, like, guys, I'm not taking this as a joke. But we still going to have fun with it. I'm, I'm going to be serious. I'm going to, like, look them in my eye because it's all about the eyes. When you look in the men, in your men's eyes and they see you, you got that look in your eyes, you can have a smile on your face or you can have a frown on your face. If they see it in your eyes, they know it's on. James, talk about some of the, the job that your offensive line has done this year. I mean, it seems at times that you just have an unlimited amount of time out in the pocket to make decisions and make reads and do all that. Just talk about that. For this is, I mean, just like I said from the beginning of the season, it's just a blessing to have all these guys around me. And 
just having, I mean, Bobby Hart. Let's let's just go down the line. Bobby Hart, Trey Jackson, Brian Stewart, Jose Josue Matias, Cam Irvin. You look at, I mean, you just got giants all around you, and those guys. And I always tell them how nice they are, but they protect me, and they do it because I'm gonna make them laugh. I'm going to get in the, on their butt sometimes, but I'm going to be the first one to pick them up, and they're going to be the first one to turn around after we throw a touchdown and just say, good job, Jameis. And if you look at us, that's different than, than other teams. Our linemen are running full speed down the field no matter how long the play is, no matter how short it is. They're going to meet whoever scored that touchdown in the end zone. And I just think that's so special. I just think it's so special and a blessing to have guys like that that are unselfish. They're blocking hard every play in I know they want to get the ball, too. I mean, sometimes I just want to throw a tackle screen to Barbara Hart and let him run down the field. I mean, I want to do that just for them. But, uh, I mean, it's fun. Like, Thursdays, Stork be playing, like, acting like he's a wide receiver. Like, we just like, we like having fun. And those guys are so, I mean, I just love them. Jameis, as a freshman, where have you gotten the authority to speak to upperclassmen the way you do? Well, one thing that Coach Fisher always, always tells me about, like, if you're good enough to play, you're good enough to lead. So it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter your your senior status or anything like that. Like you said, uh, uh, leaders are born. I mean, it's a, it's a natural thing. And when you love the game like we love, I don't think people people care. I don't think if you love the game like you and you want this team to do good, you shouldn't care if a, if a freshman tell you onto it, like tell you, like, hey, man, pick, pick your stuff up. Like, sometimes it can get, you know, petty, and some, some people can just say stuff like that. But Florida State, like, our players, they don't seem to take it to heart. Like, he's just picking on me or anything because all, it's all what Coach Fisher tells us before for me. He's just trying to put this attitude in us and just keep telling us, guys, we're trying to be elite. We're not trying to be great. We're not trying to be good. We're trying to be elite. And that's, that's the caliber that we want to play. You, you talked about when you have the big stage, you want to perform at your best. And I'm curious, when you've got... Um, you know, BCS rankings where there's three teams that are very, very close, or four, I guess, and, and you're in that mix, and you have the spotlight, a primetime game that everybody's watching. Is there a little bit more of an incentive or more of a, uh, uh, an imperative to go out there and, and put on a show that people are going to remember maybe down the line when voters are trying to decide where to rank Florida State in those? Well, when you play on a big stage, that's when everybody tries to perform at their best. It's when you're playing against the teams that people don't think that you're like people expect you to go out there and just have a, a showtime game. That's when you really got to bulk it down and stay focused. Because when we playing against Miami, we playing against Clemson, everybody say, "Hey, we on a big stage. Big stage. This is this my opportunity, you know, to get seen." So everybody gonna be going out there playing good. The games like the NC State, the Bethune Cookman, the you know, the games that people mo we're not gonna get that many fans. Most people not gonna get gonna watch the game. Those are games that really show your characteristics as a team and as a player. And <clears throat> talking about the rankings, Jimbo talked about he obviously has a vote in the coaches poll, and he did not put you guys first. And I'm curious, does that does, do you guys view that as a slight at all, or do you guys view that as Jimbo saying, "Hey, there's still more work for you to do. You can be, but you can get better. You can be better." Than oh, we we know we know we can get so much better. We know I still to this day I, the NC State game was. Not, not my best game individually. That was not our offense's best game. I mean, even though we scored 35 points in the first quarter, that was all defense. They, I mean, they got us the ball fast. I mean, when you think about what happened the second quarter and what happened the third quarter, I mean, we have to get better every single day. James Rashad is climbing up some career charts receiving-wise. Is only halfway through his junior year. As a guy that throws to him a lot, what makes him so good? It's just because Rashad is one of those people that you look at and you just like, I mean, he's a regular wide receiver. But when you put the ball in his hands, it's some on those on the game days and the game nights. When you put the ball in his man's hands, he's more likely to, to make somebody miss and take it to the house at any time. And that's one thing about having all my wide receivers. All of them have a different type of accent. Like KB, he's he's the size and he's he's fast. Kenny Shaw, he's possession. He's gonna catch catch the ball, going to shake somebody, going to juke somebody. Rashad, I mean, obviously he's the highlight reel person. You give him the ball, you might take it, he might take it to the house. Chris, even Christian, Christian Green, like he'll catch a ball. He's, he's probably the fastest wide receiver we, we got. Like people still say that Christian Green is probably the fastest wide receiver we got. And even the little freshmen, I mean, they go out there and work hard every, every play. And everyone has a different role to this team. But Rashad's role is, is, is key to our success.
you, you found there's been a couple stretches in a couple games where you found him three, four, five times in a row. What goes into those little runs where it seems like you, the two of you guys seem to really click there for stretches? I mean, it's just like muscle memory. I mean, it's just, hey, James threw a shot. James threw a shot. Oh, Kenny Shaw down the field. Hey, Kenny Shaw down the sideline. Oh, KB one on one, throw it to him. I mean, it's just, it's like how we, how our offense goes. How Coach Fisher tells me to throw to the open guy. And most of the time, it's just rules. Sometimes Rashad might be in the boundary. Like last game, I threw to the field a lot because in our rules, like, we had to throw to the field. KB got the ball a lot in the last game. So, um, I mean, it just goes into how uh, the system is going, how the game is going, and, I mean, what's the situation? Two more questions. How much How much is there involved with, it seems like you guys want every coin toss. It seems like you always get the ball right before the half and then scoring right away. How are you, How's that rhythm working? I mean, is it just coincidence? I mean, you keep winning coin toss and you guys are continuing that rhythm. I mean, 35 points in that first quarter. Even if that, even if that stuff don't, don't happen, we still expect, you know, the same results because that's, that's how we hold ourselves. And the, the, the thing that we always want to do, we always want to start fast. I mean, that's, that's one thing that's big that we always, we talked about the first game, the first few games, how we started off slow and just dragged through. Past few games, we've been starting off fast. And now we see, now our team sees, when we start off fast, we're pretty hard to, to get beat because when we start off fast, we on a roll, we got the momentum, and we just take the breath out of everybody. Devontae Freeman seems like a guy that no matter how good a game he has, he remains very humble and hasn't forgotten where he comes from. Just going home with him, we talked about before the season, you went home to Miami with him. How much were you able to learn from him and who he is and where he comes from just from that trip? Well, I mean, we, we probably got similar, you know, family and how we uh, grew up childhood-wise. And to see guys like that, I mean, that's what makes you smile as a quarterback, not having unselfish guys around you because that's how you win games. When you got guys that just want to put it all on line, no matter how many carries they get, no matter how many receptions they get, no matter how, like, the, the amount of playing time that they get, they just love the game and they want to win. When you want to win and you want to have success, I mean, more than you want to breathe, I heard that on, like, a YouTube thing, like, and that's, that was pretty awesome, so I had to say that. I mean, when you, want to, when you want to do that, I mean, that's just, it shows, like, the maturity as a team and most people see us as a as a young team, but we have veterans. You know, I mean, we have a lot of juniors. We have few seniors, but I mean, when you have when you just have that that mentality that I'm not gonna be selfish. I mean, I know that we got some new additions. I know I don't get the ball that much. I mean, I know I'm on the sideline cheering my cheering my team as on. But as long as we winning, I'm happy. But when we losing, I'm gonna pick those guys up. I'm not gonna let it just be regular. I'm not gonna accept us to lose. All right. Anything else? Nobody on the phone? No. I know you hate that. Thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>